The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning, everyone. It's 5 a.m. I'm Maddie Jansen alongside Alex Fisher. Police were in a standoff with a man accused of shooting a woman in East Bakersfield. It all happened at a home on Sumner Street last night. Police say a woman was shot by either a pellet or BB gun and taken to the hospital. We are still waiting to hear more information from police about what happened. But our photojournalist says a man came out of the home and was questioned by officers before he was let go. Meantime, a man was seriously hurt in a shooting yesterday afternoon. The sheriff's office says it happened in a Wasco neighborhood. Deputies say the man's wounds were traumatic, but they're still looking for the alleged shooter. 503 and breaking overnight, a person was hit and killed by a car on Union Avenue. It happened before midnight on Union Avenue near 7th Street. Our photojournalist says at least one person was killed in the crash, and you can see Bakersfield police officers investigating. This is just the latest in a string of pedestrian deaths across Kern County so far this year. 30 people have been hit and killed by cars in the past five months. That's about one every five days. Officials say it is important for drivers and people walking across the street to be aware of their surroundings. We can continue to follow the Sierra snow melt and more water continues to flow through Bakersfield, making the river incredibly dangerous. And three more people now understand how strong those rapids are as they were rescued by first responders over the weekend. According to Bakersfield fire officials, three people were trapped on an island in the Kern River at Hart Park. Rescue crews say the people trapped were not wearing life vests. This is just the beginning of what is expected to be the busiest Kern River rescue season in local history. Water flowing this year than any of us have probably ever seen. So just stay out of the river. Um, it's even dangerous for us to put our guys in the water. The guys that are, are, are the most uh, qualified and trained of our personnel. It becomes uh, dangerous even for them to get in the water. Officials urge everyone to stay out of the river, even through Bakersfield, as the currents flow at dangerous levels. All right, now to a traffic alert for you and an update on the road conditions of Highway 178 through the canyon. This morning, the road is partially open. Both lanes were shut down last weekend after large cracks formed on the road near the edge of a cliff, likely as a result of erosion from our state's historic rainfall earlier this year. Right now, only one lane is open and significant traffic, traffic delays are possible. Officials say it could be months before the road is able to fully reopen. The state Senate has passed a bill that will raise the minimum wage for health care workers and support staffers to $25 an hour. Eligible employees include nurses, caregivers, janitors, food service workers, and gift shop employees. Texas is now the latest state to ban gender affirming care for minors. Governor Abbott signed a bill into law that prohibits health care providers from prescribing hormones or puberty blockers to minors and blocks doctors from performing surgeries that would help with gender transition. At least 18 other states have enacted similar bans. Well, Arvin and Lamont residents are feeling sense of deja vu this morning after a recent report revealed more than two dozen oil wells in the area were leaking methane. CalGEM, the California Air Resources Board in the San Joaquin Valley Air District inspected 68 wells and found methane leaks at 27 of them. A spokesperson for CalGEM says most of the inspections, well, the well operator was also present for, and those operators have since told the state that the leaks have been fixed. Inspectors are being sent out to confirm the repairs. But for 11 of the wells, the operators have told the state they won't fix the leaks. CalGEM says it's working on an emergency contract to have those wells fixed as soon as possible. And the list of candidates running for president in 2024 is expected to expand this week. Former Vice President Mike Pence and former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie are set to formally announce. NBC's Bree Jackson's in Washington as campaign season is picking up. The 2024 presidential race taking shape. During a CNN town hall, former UN ambassador Nikki Haley making her pitch to voters. Americans are tired. They want to see a government work for them again. They want to see results happen. Haley was among Republican candidates campaigning in Iowa over the weekend. I was raised by a single mother in poverty. 
My mom worked 16 hour days to keep food on the table and the lights on. I think American decline is a choice. Uh, and I'm running for president because I think if we choose another path, we can restore American greatness. I mean, this is the first occasion really to uh, talk about my background, experience, vision for America. A notable no-show at the event? Current Republican frontrunner, former President Trump. His old running mate, Mike Pence, is expected to announce his candidacy this week as is former New Jersey governor Chris Christie. He doesn't have a base at this point, right? That could change, a lot could change. A growing list of Republicans looking to take over President Biden's job. They are hungering for a change, and all of these candidates presented an exceptional pathway to the White House in 2024. President Biden making the case that there's still more work for his administration to do in a second term and touting successes, including the bipartisan budget agreement he signed over the weekend to prevent a first ever government default. And the first Republican presidential primary debate is set for August 23rd in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. In Washington, Bree Jackson, NBC News. Court watch this morning, a man accused of sexually assaulting a young girl as she walked home from school is due back in court this week. 22-year-old Timothy Kinsavit had his arraignment postponed on Friday after it was revealed he has a similar case with similar accusations ongoing in Fresno County. The Bakersfield attack happened about a month ago on Hageman Road. Two teens were walking home from Freedom Middle School when a stranger grabbed one of the girls by her breasts. The girls got away and Kinsavit was later arrested. He denied touching the girl inappropriately and told police he thought she was 18 and only wanted to talk. Kinsavith is charged with sexual battery and annoying a child. Local leaders met with Attorney General Rob Bonta to address the increase of hate crimes statewide and here in Bakersfield. The roundtable discussion was held on Friday. According to Bonta, California is seeing the highest reported level of hate crimes in more than a decade. With a 31% overall increase in reported hate crimes, and crimes motivated by racial bias increasing by 67%. However, according to Mayor Karen Goh, there were only nine reported hate crimes in Bakersfield in 2021, the last year for which there are statistics. We're fortunate in Bakersfield that we have not seen those staggering numbers as other areas of our state have experienced. But even so, Nine reported hate crime offenses in Bakersfield are nine too many. As a black man here in, in Bakersfield and Kern County, I'm notified often about hate incidents that may not be tantamount to a crime yet, but folks are afraid and there's just no action because it's not yet a crime. Attorney General Bonta says he is providing guidance to police statewide on how to build hate crime cases. We have an update on that deadly train crash in India that killed nearly 300 people last week. Officials say a signaling error caused the derailment. That error led to the train to improperly change tracks and crash into a freight train. Authorities are still working to clear the wreckage. 275 people were killed in that crash. Hundreds more were hurt. Investigators are still trying to determine if the error was caused by a human or technical error. About 22 million people ride 14,000 trains across India every day. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nextstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.